Alrighty y'all, welcome to the very first video on loop ring. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be talking about what loop ring is, what you can build with it. And we'll also be talking about what layer one and layer two mean and the differences between them. However, before we get into all that good stuff, I do wanna point out that is a prerequisite for understanding a lot of the content in this course. You are gonna to have to have some basic Ethereum knowledge. And if you don't, then I did make an Ethereum tutorial series. So feel free to check that out. But as long as you understand the basics, meaning what an account is, what a smart contract is, what a transaction is, really, if you understand that, then you're gonna be good to go. So first, let's go ahead and figure out what layer one and layer two even means. So when we talk about layer one, what we're talking about is this main blockchain right here. In other words, it's just the main Ethereum network. Now, layer two, got a little diagram for that layer two is a secondary system that lives outside of the main layer one ethereum network now i use the term system kind of vaguely because layer two not only refers to the actual computer network but also the rules and logic that dictate how these two systems communicate and interact with one another all right sounds pretty interesting but then again we still haven't talked about what is the point of a layer two well, layer two technologies help the main Ethereum network process more transactions per second and also at a much lower cost. All right, so that sounds pretty cool. So how exactly does this work? Well, the idea is that instead of having all work take place on the main layer one Ethereum network, that instead users can perform the bulk of their activity off chain in this layer two protocol. There's actually someone called Robert Stevens who said, you can think of it as creating a side road off of the main highway to help ease congestion. And I always thought that was a pretty cool quote. So now let's go ahead and answer the question, what is loop ring? Now for this, I actually wanna to talk to you about some of my most recent business experience. And that is a few months ago, I decided to create my very own decentralized exchange, my very own DEX. So what I did, of course, is I went to the new Boston YouTube channel. I learned Ethereum. I learned Solidity. I figured out how to write smart contracts and I was loving life. So what I did first is I created this smart contract right here and it allowed anyone on the Ethereum network to deposit tokens and create trades. It essentially included all of the logic that you would ever want in a decentralized exchange. Now I tested everything locally and well, to me, I thought it was pretty awesome. However, after a few days, I started getting some feedback from customers. And I don't know if you can tell by their face or not, but they were not happy with this experience. And I asked them why, and they said, well, a couple of reasons. First, every single time I try to do anything on this exchange, like deposit tokens or create a trade, basically anytime I send any transaction at all to the Ethereum network, to the smart contract, then it's costing me like five or $10. I really wanna use this DAP, but it's just really expensive. Now, I also receive feedback saying that any request is just taken forever. Yeah, this decentralized technology is pretty cool, but in terms of user experience, everything is just really expensive and really slow. So I told myself, you know what? There must be a better way. So I went online and I did a bit of research and I stumbled across something called Loopring. So loop ring is a technology that claims to be able to solve some of these problems. So how exactly does it work? Well, according to their docs that I was studying, scratching my head, trying to figure all this out, they said that in this loop ring protocol, this loop ring architecture, what users would first do is they would send their funds to a smart contract managed by the loop ring protocol. And this would be called the deposit contract. Now this contract is responsible for storing, let me get some more arrows going here. So this contract is responsible for storing all of the user funds. And not only that, but it also contains the logic to transfer those funds to and from my DEX. So essentially I'm going to create my DEX is a separate layer two network. And then once I'm plugged in to layer one, my DEX can now listen for any new deposits. So this is where things get interesting. So unlike before, whenever a user wanted to do something like create a new order, instead of reaching out and communicating with a smart contract living on the main Ethereum network, 
the main layer one network. Now, instead, what they can do is they can actually reach out to my DEX directly. So I'm gonna have my DEX living outside Ethereum and I'm gonna create a simple API just because you know I wanna give them some kind of interface to interact with this. However, point being, instead of sending requests to a smart contract on the Ethereum network, they are instead going to be sending those requests to my API for my DEX. So for example, whenever this user right here wanted to create a new order, and let's say that this person over here was gonna be on the other side of that order, person A would just send a request up and immediately that could be fed down to person two. And from their perspectives, everything happened very efficiently. It was very quick and it was just really a great experience. And not only that, but I also created this super cool order matching algorithm so that users can always get the best deals on their trade. And I actually had this before running on my first smart contract. However, it required a lot of processing and it was just super expensive whenever I ran it on layer one. However, when I run it on my own server, it's no problem, it's super cheap. All right, so this is pretty cool. My users are now happy because they have a great user experience. All of their requests are super cheap and are happening super fast. However, thinking about this a bit more, wait a minute, something feels a bit off because what it looks like is that if all of this activity is happening on my layer two network, then how do all of these transactions, for example, this person traded tokens to this person and maybe they uh, traded another token back and forth, how does all of this information and all of their updated balances get communicated back to the main Ethereum network? Huh, that is a good question. Well, with the loop ring architecture, what's gonna happen is me, in this case, as the maintainer of this DEX, what I'm going to periodically do is I'm gonna bundle together all of this activity, all of these transactions that happen on my layer two network, and I'm going to periodically send them back to the main Ethereum network through these loop ring smart contracts. And that's essentially how this main Ethereum layer one network in my layer two decks stay in sync. But now this introduces some more questions. One, won't that just be expensive as before? And also, couldn't I just say, hey, you know what? All of these users, um, they actually sent all their tokens to me, Bucky, like trying to do something malicious. Well, the answer to both of those, the short answer at least, are no and no. The long answer are going to require a bit deeper dive into Loop Rings technologies, such as ZK Rollup, ZK Snarks, Merkle Trees, and all those other buzzwords you may have been hearing about before. Now, for that, what we're gonna be doing is covering all of those in some later videos. And I say later videos, probably like, um, I don't know, I wanna guess like four or five videos from now. And that is because the next videos that I wanna cover are some more of the user facing apps. And that includes the Loopring Smart Wallet, which is their mobile app. Loopring IO, which is Loopring's very own decentralized trading platform. And we might even be covering some layer two NFT minting as well, who knows. Now I also wanna point out that if you have any questions at all about Loopring, then the best place to go is one, their official website, loopring.org. And if you wanna to talk to someone, uh, maybe have some more granular questions, then you can check out their Discord. So right now, if you scroll to the bottom of their website and click on the Discord link, then of course that's gonna take you to their Discord. Lots of people there all the time to answer any questions that you may have. Another good resource is their Reddit. This is actually pretty active. And again, that's r slash loopring.org. So between their Discord and Reddit, really if you have any questions, there's always gonna be someone there to be able to answer them for you. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me directly or anyone from the New Boston community, as always, you can go to thenewboston.com and our links to join our Discord are either in the footer or, you know, they are, let's see, resources and join the community here as well. But either way, hopefully that gives you a very high level understanding of what Loopring is. Like I said, in the next video, we're gonna be getting into a lot more details. 
So for now, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see y'all later.